Welcome to Connect MKE. Once again, I'm your guest host, Dan Schaefer. I recently had the opportunity to have a public conversation with Milwaukee County Executive David Crowley at Anodyne Coffee in Milwaukee's Walkers Point neighborhood. We covered a variety of topics, including the county's intensifying fiscal issues, the county's relationship with Wisconsin state government, and how his office works to combat racial disparities and inequities at the county level. I want to start big picture because there's something that you have mentioned in, I think, both of your state of the county addresses that talks about something that I think is a really, really big deal. I'm not sure if everyone in the community has responded to it as the big, enormous deal that it is, but you've talked a lot about the fiscal cliff mm -hmm. that the county is facing in 2027, uh, where we have a situation where there's, without a long-term solution, we're facing cuts to parks, bus routes, public safety, all the important services that, that you oversee mm -hmm. as the Milwaukee County Executive. So what's the state of that, that problem right now, and, and do you feel like the community has grasped the magnitude of, of what the county is facing with this budget dilemma? Well, first and foremost, I want to say thank you for having me. It's always a, a great opportunity to sit down and talk, but particularly to talk about what is happening at Milwaukee County. And so I'm going to talk about briefly about the history, like what have we done and, and what has been going on. So when you think about Milwaukee County, for the past 10 years, we have cut about $30 million uh, across the board, right? Every year. So about $300 million have been cut at Milwaukee County. We found ways to streamline uh, our government. We found different efficiencies. And we're doing everything that we can to make sure that the services and the programs that so many people who rely on Milwaukee County continue to receive those services. And so right now we're facing a fiscal cliff. And so in about five years, Milwaukee County will not have any local dollars to actually invest in any of our local priorities. And those local priorities uh, will be also deemed as non-mandated uh, programs, right? So when you think about non-mandated programs, we're talking about our parks. We're talking about the Milwaukee County transit system. Uh, we're talking about services uh, that directly impact the quality of life for many individuals. But what is, is, what is going up is our state-mandated costs. So this, there's a state law that says that we cannot increase uh, our property taxes over 1%, right? Or based off of net new construction. Uh, there is some construction going on, but even when you, you, know, you, you, you think about the cost of that, it's just a little over 1%. But the issue at the end of the day is that our costs, our costs are rising about 2% uh, every year. And so that's what creates the structural, de the structural deficit for Milwaukee County. So in five years, we won't have any dollars, local dollars, to support those local priorities. So it puts many projects uh, uh, and services on the chopping block. And so that's one of the reasons why we continue to talk about uh, particularly the local option sales tax. And, 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 if, and if I had my way, what we would do is we would ask for a 1% increase on our sales taxes. So there's currently a 5.5% uh, sales tax that is out there. What people don't know is that 5% of that sales tax goes directly to the state of Wisconsin. It doesn't even stay here locally. The only thing we get to keep here locally is about 5.5% of, uh, of that sales tax. So case in point, you think about the Milwaukee uh, Bucks run. We had, we generated huge economic activity, right? About $30 million. I'm familiar million. with that Bucks run. Yes. Oh, I think, I, I think all of us is waiting for it to come back. Um, <laughs> or, or, or hoping the Brewers can make a, play, a playoff run. Um, but when you think about that 30, about $30 million of economic development, and you, and you factor about 0.5%, well, that's less than $400,000. That's not even enough to pay for one Milwaukee County transit system bus, right? And so it puts everything in perspective for us. And so, you know, if we had that 1% sales tax, we would use that 1% to actually invest in our local priorities. But the structural deficit also deals with our pension obligations. So we collect about $300 million uh, every year when it comes down to property tax levy. Well, about $100 million of that goes directly uh, into the pensions. And a lot of this is because we are pretty much playing catch up because we were not funding of the pension as we should have. And so what we would like to do uh, or, or see is seeing a, almost like a soft freeze. We wanna make sure that everyone who has worked at Milwaukee County and has retired and currently is in that system continues to get the pension that they deserve once they retire. 
And hopefully we can do that soft freeze and then move all new hires uh, moving forward into the WRS system, which is much better uh, than the Milwaukee County pension system. Uh, but this is really about so we can make the investments, the investments in the quality of life. When we talk about transit, when we talk about our parks, when we talk about services for seniors, for our young people, this is what we want to be able to do. Um, and when you, when, you, when you ask the question, how are people taking it, how are they receiving it, I think people are now waking up to the fact that we really don't have any money, and not just as Milwaukee County, uh, but even within the city of Milwaukee, who is also facing their own financial challenges. And I would say at this point, uh, I am optimistic as far as where we are because many people in this community, uh, eyes and ears are wide open to what's been happening over the past few decades. Yeah, this, this local sales tax, I think, really started to come to the forefront about three years ago mm -hmm. when Chris Abley and the Milwaukee County Board kind of, kind of dropped some of their disagreements and started coming forward and saying, hey, we need the fair deal. Yeah, yeah. Um, and it's also reduces property taxes for everyone across Milwaukee County, which could possibly be the largest uh, decrease in property taxes that we have ever seen in, uh, in, in local government. And so I think the, the difficulty, obviously, is how to get this done because it requires working with the state government. Milwaukee County cannot do this local sales tax on its own. Mm -hmm. It needs to have a partner in the state government to give the city permission. You know, not all cities are like this, but that's how, that's how things are set up mm -hmm. in Milwaukee. Um, and I think there's been a lot of talk lately about a reset mm -hmm. with, with state leaders and with, with yourself and with Mayor Cavalier Johnson. Uh, I know there was a, a very publicized kind of reset mm -hmm. meeting <laughs> that you all had not too long ago. Um, so how is that reset going, for one, and, and how do we get this done? Is this going to get done, this yeah. local sales tax? Great question. So, you know, I, I was a former state representative. So when I thought I was leaving Madison, I thought I was leaving Madison. Um, but, but I will tell you that it, it was a great thing to be there for seven years. So for four years, I was a staffer uh, for the 6th Senate District State Senator Nakia Dodd when she was serving. And then I, I served for, for three and a half years as a state representative of the 17th Assembly District which gave me the opportunity to actually build solid relationships, uh, not just with staffers, but with elected officials on both sides of the aisle. And so I would say that since becoming a uh, Milwaukee County executive, uh, the relationship has definitely changed. Um, you know, when you're playing partisan politics, that's exactly what it is, it's partisan politics. Uh, but we have been letting them know what is going on. So at the end of the day, Milwaukee County, we are an extension of the state. And, and, I, and we've had to go there and, and say, you know, if you don't give us the tools, because we're not asking for any money from the state, we're asking for tools that will give us the ability to raise our own revenue and keep that revenue here. And, and, and what's key about this is because it won't have any statewide budget implications to the rest of the state. But if you don't give me the tools now, the state of Wisconsin is going to face a major fiscal challenge because we are, again, an extension. And so when we started building those relationships, showing them some of the things that we have done within Milwaukee County, the mayor showing what they've been doing within the city of Milwaukee, they've become much more open to the idea. Now, I will say that no one has said, yes, we're going to do this for you, but no one has said no or closed the door on our faces yet, right? And I think that is the type of progress that we haven't seen for uh, this particular region. And, and the, the key about this is, is that helping out Milwaukee, the city of Milwaukee and Milwaukee County is not just about our geographical area. We are leaders in southeastern Wisconsin. We are a, a contributor of being the economic state of the uh, uh, economic engine of this state. And so as we talk about how we want to be able to, to attract more residents, attract more businesses, invest in, 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 you know, do some capital investments, they understand that right now we don't have, we don't have much to actually invest. And so it's been, it's been you know, I, I would say uh, relentlessly optimistic uh, as far as being able to see some of the Republicans in the legislature come in and really open their eyes and ears to what is happening in Milwaukee. And many of them believe uh, th that, that you know, they can't survive. The state wouldn't be able to survive without the city and the county. And so uh, I'm really excited as far as where we have been able to move the ball. Um, we, we are not necessarily uh, at the goal line quite yet, uh, but we're getting there. It's been a first down. We're doing better than the Packers. <laughs> but, but would you say it's a, 
is, is it a different dynamic than it was before? You know, have you have you added a new element or something like that? I mean, I, w I would say added so. Added a running game. I mean, I, <laughs> <laughs> I would say so. You know, I mean, this is when you look at what has happened to the, to Milwaukee County and the city of Milwaukee you're over. You know, just recently in the past two years. I mean, we're seeing new leadership, uh, you know, pop up. You know, myself being elected county executive, uh, May of 2020, in the middle of the pandemic. You have Cavalier Johnson, the mayor, who just won, uh, you know, a few months ago and has been leading the charge. And so, the same issues that people had with Milwaukee, you know, you can't continue to perpetuate a narrative when there's new leadership looking to really put an olive branch out there and say, let's work together. And when you think about all the things, all the, all the challenges that we're facing, not just as a, as a community right here, but even across the state, we have to be partners. We have to collaborate to figure out how we can move not only this community forward, but the state forward as well. So I think one of the things that was in the news recently that I think was part of that, that reset as well was uh, inviting the RNC to Milwaukee in 2024. Uh, you know, I think some people said that, that doing this will, you know, start to improve the relationship mm -hmm. with the state of Wisconsin. Other people are, I think rightfully so, very skeptical of that. Um, can, can that convention and inviting it here to Milwaukee, despite uh, the many reasons why people might not want it here. Can it be a catalyst to change that conversation? Well, I, I think that this, is, this shows at least that here in Milwaukee, we are at least willing to try, right? And when you think about the RNC, you know, I, no, I don't agree with any of their policies, right? And a lot of the things that they've been doing, you know, across the country, right? And when you think about the DNC, right, when they were coming, you know, Governor Scott Walker supported the DNC coming to uh, Milwaukee County. And unfortunately, we weren't able to have uh, the, 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 the type of party and parade that we should have been able to have for the DNC. And we had so many businesses uh, that had invested for the DNC. And then we didn't get the DNC because we was in the middle of a pandemic. And so, so many business lost out because we had to close everything down. And when you think about the RNC, forget the Republican Party. Right, so many individuals who are who who have great businesses who've lost so money, they actually deserve the opportunity uh, for to to make money from the RNC. And I look at the RNC coming to Milwaukee as an opportunity again to showcase everything that we have. In Milwaukee, we're a hidden jewel. I mean, even people who live in Milwaukee don't understand the great amenities that we have. When you look at Bradford Beach, when you look at you know the trails, when you look at our parks, our county-owned uh, golf courses, and the list continues to go on and on. Uh, but I do think that this does let the Republicans know, particularly uh, in, the, in the state Senate and in, this, in, the, in the Assembly, uh, that we're willing to do things that they don't believe that we would do, right? And, and so if we have to bring in the RNC, and that gives us a little bit more headway, uh, at, at least, um, uh, uh, for us to get the local option sales tax, uh, perfect. But that wasn't the sole reason uh, to, to bring that here. We want to be able to showcase Milwaukee no matter what background you come from. And, and honestly, when you think about where we are, particularly around partisan politics, I think that the issue is, is that we're not coming together. And, 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 and we have to find ways to bring everybody to the table so we can have uh, some real conversations. I, I always go back to a quote, I believe it was uh, Franklin Roosevelt that said, no one cares what you know until you know how much you care. And so I know that there are people whose policies that I absolutely love and don't want to hang out with. Um, and there's people whose policies that I actually hate, but yet they're pretty cool personally, right? And so for, for me, it's really about how do we, and we got all of those types of people all throughout Milwaukee County. <laughs> and so how do we- You probably really, wouldn't give me examples. Of who those I am not going to give you any examples. Uh, I, I like my job. Um, uh, but I think that at the end of the day, when you think about Milwaukee, I mean, we have different types of politics and we're a very unique place when you think about, compare us to the rest of the state. And so, you know, for us, it's about how do we bring everybody to the table, Republicans, Democrats, union leaders, uh, 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 business owners, you know, no matter what cloth you're, cu you're cut from, how can we bring you to the table to focus on local issues that matter? Because whether you're a Democrat or Republican, you still want your garbage picked up. You still want quality education. 
You still want to have some type of public safety when it comes down to, 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 to a health department or a police department or a fire department. There are things that happen here locally that shouldn't have partisan lines to it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, one of the things that you campaigned on uh, back in 2020 was being a bridge builder. Yeah. And so I think, you know, what you're talking about now is, is, is an extension of that. Uh, one of the other things you campaigned on, and I went back to our, our interview from, from back uh -oh. in the before times, back in uh, February 2020, when you, were, when you were still running for this job. Uh, and I think one of the things that you said that really stood out to me in comparison to some of the other candidates was your focus on addressing segregation mm -hmm. in Milwaukee. Uh, you said, and I'm going to quote you here, Milwaukee County is one of the most segregated places here in the country, and I want to make it a top priority to make sure that we get off that list. Yes. So two and a half years into the job, you're not going to fix that problem, obviously, but what, what type of progress have you been able to make addressing segregation in Milwaukee, and, and what type of progress do you hope to continue to make on that issue? Great question. So, you know, I, you know, when we, when we think about, you know, eliminating us off that list, people will say, you sure you'll be able to do that? That's a pretty tall order. And I absolutely think that if we can at least do it, we can at least get the ball rolling. And so, you know, one thing that folks know is that, you know, back in 2019, you know, Milwaukee County was the first jurisdiction to say that racism was a public health crisis. And, and since that time, we have seen over 200 municipalities and states make that same declaration. And so when I was elected, we started working on our, our very first strategic plan in over 20 years for Milwaukee County. And we started focusing on, on three strategic focus areas. The first one is intentional inclusion, right? And so making sure that we are intentional on making sure that throughout the ranks, throughout the administration, even on the front lines, on boards, on commissions and councils, that they are reflective of this community. And we have done that, you know? So currently half of, half of my administration uh, are, are, are women and more than half of the administration are African-American. Um, and we have made the same changes in many of the different commissions, boards uh, that we're in charge of. Um, so that was, that was when we, we talked about intentional inclusion. Uh, the second strategic focus here was about bridging the gap, bridging the gap in, 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 in health disparities and racial disparities. And we've been making those types of investments, but until we can get more money, until we can ha get the revenues that we need, we won't be able to move the needle as much as we want. But we have been making those investments. We see what we've been doing around affordable housing, what we're trying to do with the Credible Messengers program with young people. We're, we're making sure to bridge that gap, and not just for the folks here in, 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 you know, who, who rely on, on the government as a public institution, but how can we influence even some of the businesses and even how that's being talked about throughout the region. And then last but not least is this putting our money where our mouth is and actually making those investments in equity. And so one of the first things that we, I did uh, was, was we created a grants office, a special projects and grants office to go after both federal as well as a state grant dollar so we could actually invest in equity. And, and so we've been doing exactly that. And, and when, you, when you look at what we have been able to do for the past two and a half years, I will say it's, it's been remarkable. And, and it wouldn't have been able to be done if it wasn't for the federal grant dollars that we actually received for the past two years. Now, you know, if, if I had to grade myself on where we are, it would still be an incomplete because we still have a long road ahead of us. And, but I am excited about the different opportunities that have been presenting itself because we have been on this mission. And, and when I say this mission, we also changed the vision of Milwaukee. And our vision is that by achieving racial equity, we can become the healthiest county in the state of Wisconsin because when we look at all the health disparities, it's rooted in race. When we look at uh, the economic disparities. It's rooted in race. When we look at housing, we look at incarceration, it's all rooted in race. And we have to continue to make those investments in order to, 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 to make that gap much smaller, but again, give everybody, no matter where you are, the opportunity to thrive. The housing is such an interesting piece of that, and I feel like that has really been a priority of your administration and, and in the county in general. You know, wh what are some of the specifics that you might point to as, as ways that we can move forward. I think, you know, you've talked about in the past wanting more, to bring more affordable housing projects mm -hmm. to the suburbs, not just to the city of Milwaukee. Um, where do you see that type of effort going in the years to come? 
Well, you know, we can't do it alone because we can only support many of these local municipalities into actually doing it. They're the ones who control the zoning. They're the ones who control a lot of the infrastructure dollars in order to create uh, affordable housing. Uh, but I would say we're, we're doing what we can. So, for example, uh, when you think about uh, the, the amount of money that we've been able to pour into particularly eviction prevention. We have saved over 11,000 individuals to be able to stay within their homes and something that we want to continue to be able to do. And that's a great thing. And, it's in, and housing is really near and dear to me because, you know, I've been evicted three times within a two year, two year and a two and a half year span. You know, got evicted off of 22nd and Vine, got evicted off of 24th and Lloyd, got evicted off of 29th and Walnut. And when you talk about housing insecurities, you know, I, I moved every day of my life between the age of, th every year of my life between the ages of 13 to 24. So, so making sure housing stability is here for individuals is key. So we invested $19 million. And it's not to say that it is not to, we're not going to assist the city of Milwaukee with affordable housing, but I truly believe that we cannot concentrate affordable housing only within the city of Milwaukee. So it's been a great opportunity to partner up with municipalities like Wauwatosa, uh, who, is, who is looking at affordable housing projects, and some of the things that even Shorewood has done. So we are moving the needle in this, but we need more partners. We've also invested in, in, in uh, uh, Legal Aid Society, and we created the, uh, 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 um, I don't know why I'm blanking on the name, but uh, basically we provided landlords, I mean, um, uh, tenants, is that with the, right, the right to counsel. The right to counsel, yeah. thank you. The right to counsel. Uh, we, we, we've given them the ability to have their own representation when they're going to court facing landlords, right? And so there's much more that we need to do around affordable housing, but I will tell you that that's how we spent our federal ARPA dollars. And so after 24, it's going to be hard, very extremely hard for us to continue to invest in these types of programs without the state being a partner with us. All right, I want to get through a couple other quick topics before we, before we open up to audience questions here. Okay. Uh, a couple things in the news recently in the county have been, I'll say two buildings that have uncertain futures. One is the Cogs building mm -hmm. on 12th and Vine. The other is the domes. 12th and Vallee. I'm sorry, I said Vine, not, uh, yeah, 12th and Vallee. Yep. Uh, what are the best options going forward for the future of those two buildings? So I will start with the Cogs building. So our, our goal is really to, to, to reinvest into the, you know, to really replace the Cogs building. And honestly, this is an upstream investment for us because we're looking at that area, right? We just, we just opened up our mental health emergency center where we're gonna be able to provide even more you know, critical mental health crisis services for many individuals. So for us, we're looking at how can we almost create a, a human service campus. And so, you know, there was, a, there was, an op, there was talk about whether we should reinvest or, or replace the Cox building or if we should lease somewhere, right? And we looked at the lease option, but when we looked at the lease option, it, we, we, we noticed that it would put an even bigger strain on our budget. So when you look at leases and the space that we need, you know, it would have been an average of anywhere between two to three million dollars annually for this type of lease. But that money comes directly out of our operating budget. And I'm already struggling to actually invest in those programs and services that need those operating dollars when it comes down to mental health, when it comes down to crisis intervention, when it comes down to X, Y, and Z. So we look at how can we really focus on this building because this is, this is about how we invest in the people who absolutely need these services. And we still don't have enough services for many of the individuals. The, the, the services that people needed in the middle of the pandemic, they haven't gone away. They've been exacerbated. And even more people need more services now, now we're, since we're somewhat coming out of it. I don't like to say post-pandemic because we're still in the middle of a pandemic. Um, but the other thing is when we talk about the domes. And, and you know, when we, look at, when we look at the domes in all of our Milwaukee County parks, you know, this is an incredible asset. This is a great amenity that we have that people can enjoy year round. And so we really need a, a real solid plan on how we're going to invest in the domes. Now, when you look at Milwaukee County's budget, right, I mean, we're talking about the last report that came out about really uh, revamping and making the domes what it needs to be is about $62 million. But we're already financially strained with our budget. So making that type of investment into the domes and then trying to think about how we invest in all these other services puts a whole strain on everyone. And not just, that's not just thinking about myself, but it's thinking about the park staff, it's thinking about the county board. We want to be able to do something. But it's going to take a long-term sustainable plan to make sure that we can make those investments. And we're looking, at to those, we're looking into those things. All right, I'm going to get a 
couple of kind of lightning round style questions so that we get okay. a couple fun ones maybe mixed in here too. Okay. But I'll start with a topic that is that is near and dear to my heart. Uh, are we going to tear down the stadium freeway? The stadium freeway? So I, I truly believe that, what is that, 175 needs, needs to be revamped. I truly, when you think about the history uh, of, of, of highways and, and, and things like that, that needs to be a boulevard. We need to make it great. We need to make sure that we're doing everything possible. And, and, and I truly believe when we look at transportation, you know, I think everybody would agree in here, we definitely need to update our transportation infrastructure. Uh, but it definitely just should not come at the cost of any communities, particularly communities of color that we have historically seen. So you and Mayor Johnson went to the same high school? Yes, we did. Can you tell me a story about the two of you in high school? <laughs> <laughs> well, all I would say is that everybody knew who Mayor Johnson was because he was a part of the uh, uh, YMCA, I want to say, I forget which YMCA, I want to say Black Achievers Program. And uh, the reason why everybody knew who he was because he would always walk around with a name tag that says, hi, my name is Cavalier. <laughs> <laughs> So he was campaigning. He, he was, listen, he was, I never thought that I'd be involved in politics. He clearly knew when he was a freshman in high school. All right, we got a lot of people here. Chance, chance to ask a question of the Milwaukee Don't be County shy. Executive. Come on up. Um, I wanted to say in terms of, we're talking about kind of county running out of money. What do you think about something like the Milwaukee County uh, Parks Foundation that has come out in the last year run by my great friend, Becky Stoner? and raising money in a very private way for a public park. What do you think about that? Is that the future of funding where really you need just to fundraise from people that have capacity to give? Well, well first and foremost, I want to say that Becky Stoner is an awesome and great partner. The Milwaukee Parks Foundation has been tremendous supporters of our Milwaukee County Parks. And if you did not go to the Go Green uh, event yesterday, you missed a great party. Um, but I, I think that is, that is a great opportunity. Uh, but what I will say is that it's unfortunate. It's unfortunate that we have to go to creating a, a, a private foundation in order to fund a parks that should be free and open to the public no matter where you're coming from in southeastern Wisconsin. And so, you know, but I will tell you that when it comes down to the parks, I mean, the amount of reduction, the cuts that we have seen from the Parks Department. In 1989, we had just over 1,000 employees, over 1,000 employees. And I think as, as of now, when you come to fast forward to now, 2022, we have less than 400, 500 employees now. And when you think about it, we have 157 parks. We've got about 14 golf courses. We have miles and miles of trail space. And we don't have the staff or the capacity really to... to to, to even maintain many of these things. So when you, when you see the, that grass getting you know, longer, we really don't have those bodies. And it's unfortunate that we've had, to, we've had to revert to like beer gardens. I don't know, there's nothing wrong with beer gardens. I love beer gardens too. But it's unfortunate that we've had to revert to beer gardens in order to increase revenues just to keep our park systems going. And so at the end of the day, we need to be able to invest in our parks because I'm a fan of the parks. I think they're the beating hearts of every community, including ours. And I think that's when you think about you know, mental well-being, physical well-being, and, and community wellness. These are the places where the, all of that intersects. Milwaukee County Executive David Crowley, thank you so much for being here. Thank you. And thanks to all of you for being here as well. Thank you for joining us here on Connect MKE. You can hear my complete and unedited conversation with David Crowley in my online publication, The Recombobulation Area. I'm your host, Dan Schaefer, and thank you for joining us.